G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Today, I am going to be doing something that I've kind of done before, but with a little bit of a different twist on it. And the basic premise of this video is going to be going through each of the 18 teams and stealing one player from an opposition club where they can just have them on a long-term contract for free, basically like a free agent, regardless of contract status. If each club in the league had their pick of any player, who would they choose? Now, getting the format of this video correct is a little bit tricky because realistically, if every single club in the league could choose a single player, you might just have a list of like three or four of the same blokes for all the 18 teams. So I'm going to make this a little bit different. I'm essentially gonna do this like a draft and start from the Wooden Spooners, if they had number one pick of anyone in the league, all the way down to Collingwood the Premiers who have pick 18 in this scenario. So then how is it different to simply ranking the 18 best players in the league? Well, you gotta consider each team's needs. So West Coast, who in this video will have pick one, they could pick Marcus Bonzapelli, but it probably doesn't make a lot of sense if he's turning 20 this year and the Eagles are pretty much just embarked on a fairly lengthy rebuild so there will be some nuance to it and what you will see is probably the younger teams more picking based on you know long-term potential and then as you get down to the more of the teams that are in contention that's where you start to see them probably pick more on genuine need so I've had a little bit of fun with this one and let's crack straight into it so in reverse order ladder like a normal draft West Coast once again have pick one and based on the premise that we want a player probably at least 25 and under, I'm thinking someone young, but not necessarily too young, because if you theoretically could choose anyone in the league, you want to have some sort of guarantee that that player is going to be high quality. So you wouldn't say pick Colby McKercher, even though he is probably right for West Coast from a needs point of view. So I think West Coast would probably take someone like Sam Taylor, one of the absolute best key defenders in the league, kind of a positional need. At 25, he's not too old for West Coast list needs. I think they would probably absolutely snap him up here, which means North Melbourne have picked two. And again, probably gonna have a bit of a bias towards young players. And you could look at need for this one. And I would argue that North's biggest need at the moment is a key position defender. However, in this scenario, if they have picked two across the entire league, I'd probably go with Nick Dacos because that's based on the logic that you could probably find a half decent key position defender a lot cheaper. So if they have the opportunity to choose anyone, they want someone young, they want someone who has some running carry and can roll through the midfield and add a point of difference And Nick Dacos. I think he ticks a lot of boxes for North Melbourne there and could conceivably have been the right choice for West Coast too. So that leaves us with Hawthorne who have picked three and another team that probably in terms of need, what would they go for? A key position defender also comes to mind. But based on the logic that key position forwards are probably a little bit harder to come by, at least high quality ones, I reckon they're going to be sniffing around guys like Ben King. So that's my selection there. A long-term partner who's of a similar age to someone like a Mitch Lewis could form an amazing one-two punch down there. I think their best 22 has a more obvious need for a ready-made key defender. But if Ben King's on offer, you, you go that, especially when you consider Sam Taylor's gone. So, Gold Coast Suns, what do they need? Well, they've got a young list that's about to mature. Another team that could potentially go for another key position defender long-term there with Ballard, assuming that Sam Collins is probably towards the end of his career. Key forwards are okay. I'm probably going to go for a young option here and a midfielder that is different to what they've currently got in Errol Golden. And obviously, I think he's 21 years of age, nearly won the Brownlow or gave it a seriously good shake and plays a bit more outside and I think could complement guys like Anderson and Miller and Raul who were a bit more inside dominant. Flanders is another one. Bailey Humphrey. Golden's the right age to play long term with that midfield group. He is an amazing player already and he adds something different to that mix. So I like that choice. So Fremantle's on the board now. And for me, I think it, it's, it's forward line talent. And I also wanted to pick someone that probably hasn't hit their prime yet because Fremantle are still a young list. They did make finals in 2022, but by most metrics, that's a little bit early for how mature their list is. So I'm going to probably look at either a key forward or a small forward and generally have a bias towards the key forwards because they're a little bit harder to come by. So Jamara Yugo Hagen, if he's on the board, I think Freeman will snap him up here. Then we've got Richmond. This is an interesting one here because they probably need an injection of young talent, but that sort of comes with a degree of risk. And so they could just look at who is some young midfielders of the comp that are already elite, but still pre-prime. And the most obvious one here for Richmond is probably Zach Butters. They've just recruited Taranto and Hopper and adding Butters to that mix ensures they have a good midfield for a while. And then we got Geelong. And again, a tricky one because they would probably also go for someone in their prime but I've decided to go for the somewhat local talent in Harley Reid here, which is contentious. There is a degree of risk, but I think with the profile Harley Reid has, he would probably feature somewhere in this top 10. And I've decided to go for a younger midfielder that adds something different to what Geelong have there. So you could have had a number of options, including the next bloke, but I've decided to go with Harley Reid for that one. And then Essendon's on the clock. And again, 
what do they really need? I think maybe a long-term key position defender to partner Ben Mackay here. That's absolutely an option. Or with this pick, do they decide to go for a midfield point of difference? They have recruited some good midfielders in recent years. That being said, someone who would add something different is Connor Rosie. And again, he probably could have gone to Geelong the pick before. Let me know in the comments what you think of that. But Rosie adds something different to Essendon's team. He's already an elite player and in the right age bracket to be there for Essendon's list build, which is still you know ongoing in there. A lot of players are sort of about to hit their prime. They're kind of like a middle-aged list at the moment. Rosie ticks all those boxes. Then we've got the Adelaide Crows, and they are probably looking at two areas. I still think maybe you know a really first choice key defender. I've said that from so many teams here, but my logic is here that key forwards will generally get picked before key position defenders and when you have this pick, you're probably going to pick a long-term player. So someone like a Harris Andrews or something like that is probably at the back end of his career. So a team like Adelaide probably isn't going to look that old. Uh, my midfield point of difference is also a consideration here. However, however, I've decided to go with James Sicily, who I think would add something different to what they've already got there. The second key position defender picked in this list, I think James Sicily would really shore up a back line that was a little bit leaky last year. And considering how good their forward line is and the potential of their midfield, I think he would be a great selection for the Adelaide Crows here. And then at the next pick, we got the Western Bulldogs who have drafted heavily in key position players over the last few years and really strong. Like they really don't need any more key forwards. Uh, they got Buzzlinger down back. Maybe they could add another one there, but I would probably just look at the next generation of their midfielders when you look at the maturity of it. You know, McRae, Bont, and Libba. Um, then there's a next wave there of guys like Bailey Smith, assuming he stays, Riley Sanders. So bolstering the midfield with a player in his prime, and I think Jordan Dawson would probably be a great fit for them here. Just give them a little bit of that midfield refresh, that transition to the next generation. I like Jordan Dawson for the Bulldogs at this pick. So let's go with Sydney. Now, this is a team that probably is right at the pointy end of the ladder, you'd think, in my opinion, going into this year. And I've, I've said it all preseason, but I think a key position defender, a best 22 one specifically, would make sense with some degree of maturity. And I think a guy right in that sweet spot is Jacob Wiedering for the Sydney Footy Club. If he was in this team going into 2024, they're arguably a serious premiership favourite. Then we've got GWS. GWS are probably... Well, they've got a sweet back line. I really rate the talent that they've got there, obviously with Taylor and, and Buckley and Iden and, and more. The forward line took some strides. They probably could look at a key forward in this pick, but I've already taken a few of the best ones off their list. What I think they probably do need to consider is the next generation of their midfield. So they've got Green and Callahan, and then there's a bit of a gap in age at least between some of their best performed midfielders. Like they're sort of at the pointy end of their career. So I think getting in another mid to form a great trio with Callahan and Green potentially. And if I'm picking anyone, I'm probably going Sam Walsh at this selection. He's about 23 years of age, probably one of the best midfielders for that age specifically, now that we've taken Butters and Rosie as well out of the equation here. Sam Walsh for GWS would be a great pick. Then we've got St Kilda. What do they need? I think their forward line talent is really good, um, assuming everyone's fit, which is not something they had the, the benefit of last year. Their back line's obviously rock solid. Their team defense is good. I would probably be looking at just refreshing the midfield and adding a midfield with a bit of a point of difference. So they've got a few. I'm not saying they're completely deficient, but if they had this pick, I'd probably go with someone like Tom Green to add something different to their list. And they've got a lot of young talents and Tom Green has the benefit of still going to be around for a while. What is he, 22, 23 years of age? I think 22. So he can grow with that Philippu Owens, Windhager sort of batch of players. Then we got Carlton. Now we're starting to really move into the, the batch of teams that are going to be in contention. So they're gonna have both a look at the immediate now, but also don't wanna pick someone with two years left in their career if they've got this magic pick to choose from. I think Carlton probably could use a small forward. And I've actually like Isaac Rankin for this pick. I think Isaac Rankin has a ton of potential and is starting to show that, particularly in the last two seasons at AFL level. 50 goal seasons, not completely out of his wheelhouse this coming season. So not only is he a long-term player, not only could he be good further up the field if he um, decided to roll on ball every now and then, he's going to get Carlton goals. I like this pick for Carlton. I think he adds something that they haven't quite nailed in their team. He could work in tandem with Jesse Motlop. And we got Melbourne right at the pointy end of their premiership window. Um, aging list, not necessarily about to drop off, but they can afford to go a little bit older here. So a team that needs a key forward, Charlie Kerno is only 27. I think he makes sense for them. I don't think it would have made the same amount of sense for a Hawthorne, but I think Melbourne will probably look in the next two or three years, they've got a strike, and Kerno is going to be in his prime for at least the next two or three. So Kerno to Melbourne at this pick, even though he's ranked higher in like, if you ranked all the players in the league, he'd be way higher. But in this specific game, 
He goes at pick 14. Sorry, it was 15. But now we are left with the Port Adelaide Football Club and they've got an interesting demographic, a team in contention and a lot of their best players are quite young and there's still a bright future there. Like the midfield of Rosie Butters and uh, Jason Horn Francis, of course, like that still has some hang time in it. There's some longevity associated with that. So they could go young or they can pick a player in his prime now because they're up towards the top end of the ladder. And that's why I think someone like Christian Petrarca probably falls here. Because again, I think he's 27 or maybe 28 in this coming season. So towards the back end of his career, but he could start there as a full-time midfielder who floats forward uh, and then sort of towards the back end of his career become a quality forward. And I don't know, I like this pick. Petrarca is probably too good to pass up for a team in contention like I expect Port Adelaide will be. Then we got the Brisbane Lions. Now, the Brisbane Lions do have a pretty balanced and sweet team. Like, talls forward and back. Pretty sweet, like maybe a key forward. Um, but I had taken a lot of the good ones for other teams in this particular video. But I'm also considering maybe another young midfielder. Just because they've got this batch of guys like the Ashcroft brothers will be on the list. I know they're going to maybe get Sam Marshall as well as an academy player. They've got Jasper Fletcher as well. So maybe add to that to ensure that this window continues. So it's not really a position of need. It's more like doubling down on what is going to be a future strength. I, I think picking a young midfielder who could be good now, obviously, as they're in a premiership window, but also be there to replace Lockie Neal. And I'm going to go with Caleb Sarong for this particular pick. I like it. He's an All-Australian at 22 years of age. He helps him in the short term. And long term, he's a Lockie Neal replacement. And finally, we got Collingwood here. And again, it's probably be looking at a key forward. Obviously, a team in contention, so getting one of the best would be good. I did consider Jeremy Cameron, but he is 30. And if you do have the choice of picking this player, you obviously, like I said, want to pick a player who's going to be around for a little bit. And that left me probably with Nick Larky. If he came into this side, he'd help them immediately, kick 70 goals last year, and also be there for long enough to justify it. And he's probably, off the top of my head, probably the next best. Max King is a contender, maybe Oscar Allen behind that. But Larky just came off a 73 goal season, so he's got that sort of guarantee, maybe not a guarantee, but he's got a little bit of a proven history of being a Coleman contender. There you go, guys. This one is a bit of a fun one. Let me know in the comments what you think. Obviously, it's hard to do this uh, because it is kind of such a hypothetical scenario here. And I am sure I've missed some players out. So let me know if you can think of anyone better. As always, I appreciate you watching the videos. I appreciate you being subscribed. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.